For those who see the world not as it is, but as it can be, who seek to make their vision of the future become reality, their mission is our mission. At Lockheed Martin, we never forget who we're working for. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me well? Excellent. So what I wanted to do today was to talk to you a little bit about innovation, share my thoughts on innovation, talk a little bit about why STEM matters, and share some of my own personal stories about my own career in STEM and what lessons I learned along the way. So let me start with innovation. Innovation really makes the world go around. Innovation is important because it saves lives, it improves lives, it contributes to the overall well-being and the productivity of the world. So if you take a look at the examples that are on this slide, whether it's a light bulb, Band-Aid, the computer, personal computer, vaccines, everything, every invention, every innovation has really changed lives in completely dramatic new ways. Now, of course, some of the simple diseases are solved, some of the simple scientific challenges have been solved, and what we're facing today are complex, big challenges. So one of the things you see over on the slide is the DNA, the Human Genome Project, which was an effort to map and sequence the human uh, genetic blueprint, which was completed about five years ago. And then, of course, the iPhone. Who doesn't have an iPhone these days? And you, could you imagine you don't? <laughs> have you tried it? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but this is just to say that innovation really, really has changed our lives, continues to change our lives. And to make innovation happen, you need STEM. And so STEM, science, engineering, technology, mathematics, really impacts life in big, big, big ways. And STEM education matters because to solve many of the whole world's problems, what you need is a real grounding in science technology, engineering, and mathematics. There is one thing about STEM, though, that is misunderstood. At least when I was a young girl, I thought that if I went into physics, just like my father, then what would happen to me was I would graduate, uh, do my undergraduate, then do my graduate studies, and then afterwards I would either go work in a nuclear lab or go become a physicist or a professor in a university. Those are the only two things I saw as possibilities. But what I'm here to tell you, for anybody who thinks that that's what STEM education takes you, is that you have options to be either a professor or a scientist, I'm here to tell you that the options are endless. The possibilities are endless. And what I learned along the way is that you could be a lab scientist, or you could be a doctor, but you could also be an entrepreneur. You could be in finance. You could be in education. You could be solving world's problems in major parts of the world. You could do so many different things. You could be in human resources. You could be a analyst. You could do so many different things. And this is something that I never understood when I was growing up. I thought once you got a degree in science, then your only path was to be a professor or a scientist. And so the possibilities, I just want to tell you, are endless. And at Johnson & Johnson, for example, we have many, 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 many employees who are educated in STEM, and then they may not necessarily be doing science in the lab, but there are multiple different opportunities to have careers with a STEM education. Second thing I wanted to mention is that we all, all of us, need to make STEM a star. Why do we need to make STEM a star? Because I am sick and tired of watching television programs or movies in which people who have a science background are portrayed in one of two ways. They're either nerds or they are the mad scientist about to destroy the world with all of the science that they are cooking up in the basement of their, their home. And so usually in James Bond movies, the villain is this evil scientist. Or you look at any of the television programs, and what you see are the kids who are sort of like the, the, the supporting role, the people who are the nerds, the friend who is not cool is the scientist. I'm sick and tired of that. 
let's make science the star. I mean, why can't science be cool? Science is cool. Science makes the world go around. STEM education makes you so much better, so much more of a star than not having a STEM education. So we all need to make STEM be the star. So what did I learn along the way? Um, as I mentioned to you, I'll, I'll share a little bit about my own background. I grew up in India where science and STEM education was seen as a way to improve your lot in life. So if you had a science education, if you had a STEM education, then you got better jobs. My father was a physicist, and so I, he said to me, you need to become a physicist, and I said, okay, that's what I'll do. And I went and did my studies in physics, and I was doing my undergraduate in physics, and don't get me wrong, I still love, love, love physics. But as I was growing up, I began to see some of the things in society that I felt strongly about and that I wanted to express my opinions about, and I started to write. And I began to write for women's magazines and began to write about my opinions about some of the social inequities I saw, and they began to get published. And can you imagine, it was just an unbelievable experience for the first time to see my own name in print. And then, several weeks later, came a check for 60 rupees. 60 rupees is really nothing. But it made me feel like I could contribute, I could make an impact, somebody wants to listen to me, they care about my opinion, they actually read something and I got paid for it. And so I began to, in my graduate studies, move into both science and then into journalism, became a science journalist, covered many of the scientific breakthroughs that happened um, including genes, we used to discover specific genes for Mendelian diseases. And after that, there was a whole um, Star Wars and sort of this um, work that we were doing in aerospace and in, in defense. Then there was the Human Genome Project, as I mentioned, the Human Genome Project to map and sequence the, ge uh, the genome of the human being. And I was at the White House when President um, Clinton actually announced the sequence of the human genome. It was just this unbelievable experience. And the fact that a few visionaries and then the whole world collaborated in what seemed like an impossible task, three billion dollars, 10 years, sequence the, and the genome of the human being. And today, in a healthcare company, I see why that basic science was so important, because we're able to tell so much more about disease, so much more about resistance, so much more about cures, because we have the genomic blueprint in a computer, really. You know? And so what I learned along the way in, throughout my career is, first of all, to be a team player. Used to be, when I was a writer, and when I thought, I was going to actually work in a lab. I was thinking about myself as the individual contributing to something. And I think that that is probably all of us want to make an impact we want to as individuals contribute. But what I learned along the way is really that science is a team activity. Uh, in the old days, we describe people, one individual or two individuals discovering something, a scientific breakthrough, but the truth of the matter is that science is a very collaborative, large enterprise. And what I learned in working with many of my colleagues and seeing all of the scientists who worked on the, on the genome project was that really it takes a village or it takes a world sometimes of scientists to work on big complex challenges. And today, what we face in society are big complex challenges. More recently, you all I'm sure heard about the outbreak of Ebola in West Africa. And that too took an entire team of scientists, government, academia, industry, the WHO, everybody collaborating, first of all, to bring the outbreak under control, but second of all, to continue to work on, and it's not done yet, but continue to work on 
uh, vaccines, medications, and other ways, and diagnostics to actually make sure that we don't face this sort of outbreak again. So today's, the world is a very global place, and the complexity of the problems we're trying to solve takes team effort. And, and most of the time these days also, um, awards are given, given for collaborative efforts, not, for, not only for individual contributions. So learn to be a team player, because this is a team sport. Science is a, a team sport. Second, lead with passion. So one of the things that I learned also along the way, and I described to you this, my um, interest in writing, is that when I was just thinking about my future as a scientist in a lab or a professor, I wasn't as, as passionate about it. I liked it. I thought I would do a really good job at it. But there was something in me that was very passionate. And I know that there are colleagues of mine who are passionate. Some people are passionate about solving diseases. Some people are passionate, like we saw the, the work that Dean came and showed, uh, about robotics, engineering. Some people are passionate about writing. Others are passionate about starting their own companies, being entrepreneurs, making a difference that way. So don't pigeonhole yourself into just one particular tunnel vision of STEM is, is what I'm here to say. Take your passion, lead with passion, combine that with the STEM education, and that is a secret sauce. And and have a sense of urgency and drive. Don't let, let grass grow under your feet. Because what is really important is when you have a passion and when you want to solve a problem, you have to show a sense of urgency to solve that problem and drive. And the sense of urgency and drive is a big, big, big critical success factor in succeeding in your career, in pursuing your passion. Be willing to change direction. So sometimes you have to be open to ideas. You have to be open to opportunities. You never know where the next opportunity or next window of opportunity or door opens. So be willing to change direction. What do I mean by that? It's not to lose focus, because you want to be focused, and you want to know where you finally want to end up. But be willing to consider other points of view. Be willing to consider other ways of getting to the same outcome, and again, be a team player. And finally, find a STEM mentor, because I think mentorship, I think everybody speaks about mentorship, but I cannot state the importance of finding somebody who inspires you, somebody who's a role model, somebody who can coach you, somebody who you can go to and ask for advice, somebody who can tell you which direction to go, or if a change of direction is a good way to go or not a good way to go. And mentorship and the ability to network and work with your broad brush of stakeholders around you. This could be your teacher, could be parents, could be your siblings, could be your friends. It could be role models you see on TV. So finding that mentor and finding somebody who inspires you to do better, challenges you, is an important part also of finding a way to make a difference. Because at the end of the day, it's about making a difference in the lives of people around the world, but also making a difference in the world in general. So with that, I know we're a little bit short on time. I'm going to end here and happy to take any questions.